eternal God, our Father, thank you for this another day. Thank you, Master, for this being another day means that yesterday is another day you kept us. So thank you for keeping us. Thank you for being a God that we can trust will keep us. For you're the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Have your way in this worship experience so that you would be magnified, that your church would be edified, that the saints would be sanctified, that Satan would be terrified, that our wrongs would be rectified. We thank you right now for what you will do in and through us, for your glory and the good of the kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord.
now we're going to hear from Deacon Herman Williams and Director Sister Doris Myers. Amen. Amen. Why don't you greet them with a big praise of the Lord as they come. some ministry with her on this weekend, so I'll get a chance to ask her to be our guest soloist yeah. on that Tuesday. Yeah. So let's be prayed up as they have mentioned, and let's thank God for our chairperson. Yeah. God's anointed new generation.
thank God that you do have a testimony. Because the only reason you've got a testimony is because the Lord has brought you through some tests. God, our Father, thank you for the experiences you have brought us through. Thank you from those experiences. We thank you for the lessons you brought us to. And now, God, we pray that our faith be quickened and made anew as we seek to be exhibits, extensions, and expressions of your greatness in our lives. Make me now a living echo of your tongue. Think with my mind and speak with my lips. And your people will hear what you have to say. And then bless that it would fall on good ground. That we would not just be hearers of the word, but doers also. We praise you in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we stand together, Matthew chapter 6. each of you who supported the revival this week. Amen. 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 And then on Friday we said farewell to Sister Vivian Lewis. And uh, we want to continue praying for that family. Uh, she had a glorious life Amen. on this side. And now Amen. she has a more glorious life Amen. on the other side. Shortly after that service, I said, now, Lord, what do you want me to say Sunday? And uh, I felt convinced by Friday night what he wanted me to say. And so I worked on that message and was excited about that message. Got to church and realized I had left the message at home. But that's all right. It's still in my heart. And then I get to Sunday school class to our Bible fellowship hour and they didn't know it. They were talking all over my sermon. And then this choir sings about a testimony. So God has been saying repeatedly, stick with what I gave you. And that's what we're going to do. Matthew chapter 6, verse 20, 32 and verse 33. Jesus says, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need somebody say need, need of all these things but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you Amen uh, so certainly keep your Bibles open because we'll be around other verses than those two. But I want to preach from the subject, how to get what you need. How to get what you need. Won't you repeat it after me this time? How to get what you need. Amen. You may be seated. The church of Jesus Christ or at least those of us who claim membership in the church of Jesus Christ should admit even if not to those outside the family we ought to admit it to each other that the sky of our profession often contradicts the earth of our productivity. All right. All right. We have a bold broadcast with a puny product. Yeah. 
Why aren't there noted testimonies of frequent life-changing experiences amongst those in our fellowship? Many times if you have a testimonial service, people have to go way back. 50 years ago to something the Lord has done. But why isn't it that as disciples of Jesus Christ, we live with life-altering encounters with the Lord and they become customary amongst those of us who are saints? It means either our faith is promising beyond its potential, or we really aren't practicing our faith. All right, amen. I suggest to you today that Christianity has not been tried and left wanting, but it's been found sufficient and left untried. Amen. Many of us talk a good game. Help me if you can. We can talk about how prayer makes a difference. Right. When we know we ain't prayed since last Sunday. <laughs> Come on, help me if you can. We, we talk about praising God and how we love to praise God. And we only do what we think is praise when the choir sings a song we like. All right, amen. I want to say that that's not necessarily praise if you're responding to a song Praise is you responding to the Savior. Yeah. The song may remind you of his goodness. The sermon may remind you of his goodness. A testimony may remind you of his goodness. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul shouts hallelujah. Thank you for saving me. But that's not contingent upon the right soloist. And it's not contingent upon the right beat. I can think of it and be by myself. One area where there's failure amongst the saints is that there is an outcome between those of us who are in the faith that often looks the same as the outcome of those who are outside of the faith. Right, right, right. Look at verse 32, our text again. Jesus says, For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. That word Gentile could be translated heathen. What he's saying to those Jewish followers up in his company is that those who don't have a relationship with God like you say you do are seeking after the same stuff y'all stressing over. All right. What are they stressing over? Verse 25. Their life. What they're going to eat. What they're going to drink. Their body. What they will put on. Jesus says, is not life more than meat and the body than raiment? So if those who don't know God, like we say we know God, is stressing over life. Their body is it's really capsulized in the environment, time, and the body. If that's what's stressing them, it should not be what's stressing us. Amen. Amen. How do you know if it's stressing you? Well, here it is. If your prayers are always about the stuff Jesus just said, take no thought for. All right. Then that means you're stressing over the wrong thing. If you only shout when you get those things that Jesus says you should not take any thought for, then that means you're stressing over the wrong things. So you can catalog and chronicle what you're stressing over by what you pray about and what you praise about. Amen. See, one thing you ought to be able to praise God for is that every day with Jesus, yes, is sweeter than the day before. That has nothing to do with cash, that has nothing to do with a cruise, that has nothing to do with a condominium. It is your connection with Christ and it is sweeter as the days go by 
And when you find yourself rejoicing, it ought to be about that. You know how carnal we have gotten so uh, so often in the church? is, that, and, and you know it. That's why some of you compose yourself. If you start crying, folk gonna start wondering, I wonder what they're going through. <laughs> and so you try to hold it in so folk don't get in your business. The reality is, my tears may not be tears of sorrow. They're tears of joy. I'm not crying because I'm sad. I'm crying because I'm happy. That's what the songwriter said. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. That's what I shout over. Jesus says the Gentiles stress over these things. Y'all ought to know better. Two percent of the population are Jews, but they own forty percent of the wealth. They get it. And in the church era, we're often late. We follow the cues from those who are outside of the church because we hear the principles of the kingdom, but those who are blessed are not those who hear them, not even those who just say them. You are blessed by keeping them. Now this text is not about wealth building. If you want wealth, there are principles all over the scripture that talks about wealth building. But in this text, it's not even about wealth. It's about getting our needs met. Now, one of the reasons some of our needs aren't being met is because we haven't distinguished between needs, wants, and desires. You see, a need is a requirement for survival. You need food. You want a steak. You see, need is a requirement for survival. Want is not required for survival is for convenience. A desire is the quality of want. You see, you need food, you want a steak, but you desire a sermon. Come on, help me if you can. You may need transportation, you want a car, but you desire a Cadillac. And many people come to church stressed because they're in debt by desires, and now they spent money for their needs on their desires, and they think God is punishing them. God ain't punishing you, you punishing yourself. Because you have made choices so that you can enjoy life so that by seeking to enjoy life, you're not handling the necessities of life. Don't confuse needs, wants, and desires. Jesus says, same verse, the Father knows that you have need of these things. So he knows what you need. And so, one, we have physical need. We got it. Need air to breathe. Need water to drink. We need clothes to wear. We have needs. But the shortage of need physically is only a manifestation of a shortage of an inner need. Help me if you can. You, you see, we spend in our culture so much time trying to accommodate the physical that 
Joseph Stoll says the body, soul, and spirit live so close together they catch each other's diseases. Wow. And so oftentimes we don't recognize the need until it's manifested physically. Amen. But the need in physical is really spiritual or solial. And if you don't get it on a spiritual level, if you don't meet the need on a solial level, you can camouflage it with physical stuff. All right. In other words, if, if, if my spirit and soul has a deficit. Mm -hmm. I can buy clothes to keep you from knowing. Mm -hmm. Come on, help me out. Right. If, if I feel small on the inside, I can buy a big house so you won't know how small I feel. Wow. Right. <laughs> and so many people are spending money to take care of a physical want and a physical desire to camouflage a deeper inner need. Jesus says, when you pray, pray, give us this day our daily bread. I wondered why would he want us to pray that? A big old God saying pray for something so tiny. Give us this day. Seems like a big old God would say, when you pray, say, give us this decade. Our decade needs. But no, he says, give us this day our daily bread because in that prayer, it's more about faith than it is food. Amen. So then, if you're going to deal with the physical need, understand that first of all, you've got to identify the need. And then when you identify the need, understand that the Father knows you have need of them, so you ought not be losing sleep weren't worrying about that. Jesus says, look at the birds. Verse 26. They don't even plant gardens. They don't sow or reap. They don't gather in barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Yeah. <laughs> now why don't they plant gardens when you and I have to if we're going to get a crop? Oh. It's because the way he designed birds, birds don't plant. If you see a bird tilling the ground, it's time for you to go see a brain special. Because you ain't seeing what's really going on. That's not what birds do. So what Jesus is saying, all birds have to do is be birds. And their needs are met. He said, look at the grass. He says, they don't worry about how they're going to be clothed, but the Father clothes them. They don't sew. They don't have needle and thread, but the Father clothes them because all they've got to do is be who they be. Amen. Jesus is saying to you and I that the reason why many of us don't have what we need is because we aren't being who we're supposed to be. All right. All right. All right. The Bible teaches your gift will make room for you. If you would just dare be who God has called you to be, the kingdom takes care of the kingdom. Amen. Just told you, environment, body, and life are the things that often stress us. We get stressed with the environment. I wonder what they say. I wonder what they think. I believe God wants me to do A, B, and C, but if I get up and do A, B, and C, I wonder what my cousin going to say. I wonder what they're going to think of 
about me if I mess up. That's environment. You're worrying about the stuff in your environment. Yeah. We worry about time. Yeah. Some people say, well, if I had known what I know now, mm -hmm. when I was younger, mm -hmm. I'd sure do a whole lot different. Well, you didn't know it then, yeah. but you do know it now. So stop crying over spilled milk and maximize what you know today. <laughs> Come on, help me if you can. Yeah, if, 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 if you wish you had known it when you were 17, but now you are 67, take your wisdom at 67. You ain't dead yet. We want to minimize our potential by environment and we want to minimize our potential by time God doesn't work in time God works in eternity God is able to take an age to Abraham and tell him you're going to be the father of a great nation and I ain't going to, he told him that when he was 75 he, he says I'm not going to even start it now you got to wait before I do it. He waited till he was 90. And then he said, I will, yeah, bless those that bless you and curse those that curse you. So if you still have blood running warm through your veins and you can still breathe and your heart is still pumping blood, you are still alive. Stop saying you would have done it if you were younger. You can still do it now. Then we let the body mm -hmm. reduce us. Mm -hmm. I can't do what I used to do. Right. No, you can't do what you used to do, but you can do what you can. Right. So stop dying before you die. Right. Stop quitting before it's over. If you can still think, think. If you can still move, move. If you can still work, work. Don't let the external cause you to shrink internally. Amen. Amen. It's not just the physical need, but then you also have this soul you need. What is the soul you need? That's your mind. Jesus says, take no thought. Y'all, I used to think that was hyperbole. You know, exaggeration. He didn't mean that literally. He, you know, no thought. Then, then Paul comes back in Philippians 4 and says, be careful for nothing. Surely they didn't mean that literally. But y'all, they did. And, and we, get, we, let, we give each other passes on that. Y'all pray for me. I don't know how I'm going to make it. And then we come back with an echo. I know what you mean. I, 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 it's tough on me too. And Jesus would say, wait a minute. I told you, don't even think about that. You know, you can do one or two things if you're playing baseball. You can step up at the batter's mound and picture yourself striking out. Or you can picture yourself hitting the ball. If you picture yourself striking out, you probably will. If you plan to fail, you fail to plan. Jesus says, stop worrying about the outcome and focus on the end goal. Amen. All right. Take no thought. Because here's what happens. Worry begins to paint negative pictures in your mind of things that may never happen. What if my car don't stop? <laughs> really? I got a job, but they don't pay with every two weeks. How I'm going to get to work every day with no pay? I ain't got no gas money. So instead of you focusing on the job, you're focusing on gas. Right. And Jesus says, take no thought for that. Say, give us this day our daily bread. If I need gas today, and I got gas today, I'll go to work today, and I'll deal with gas tomorrow. Amen. Amen. I'm 
telling you what I've lived. I, 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 I was in college and had to preach four places. I told you this story and Billy loaned me his car. Billy was from Shreveport, so I knew him in high school. Billy was a, a comical guy. He, 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 he was bow-legged, and he walked with his head up in the air. He just a real strange, comical guy. Billy found out I had four places to preach. Now, Billy wasn't going to go to church. Oh. <laughs> Sunday was his day to sober up. <laughs> but Billy said, you know, he couldn't pronounce Banneker. That's my middle name. So he called me Bad Luck. <laughs> and Billy said, Bad Luck, you can use my car. I said, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Thank you, Lord. Got in the car and it was on empty. <laughs> and I ain't had no gas money. I said, Lord, help me make it to the church. Made it to the church. And they gave me an envelope. I said, thank you, Lord, but it was a check. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do, but 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 I might have had two dollars. I said I put two dollars in there. Walked in the gas station. A man was in the gas station, and he said, "You that preacher just preached at my church, didn't you?" I said, "Yeah." He said, "You in college?" I said, "Yes, sir." He said, "Man, you did some good preaching. Let me bless you in school." Amen. Yeah. He gave me a twenty dollar bill. That was enough to help me. Yeah. Get from there to the next church. And the next church, they gave me a love offer. So I could put some more in the tank. And, and when I gave Billy his car back, they, later that night, he saw it was full. He said, oh, bad luck, you want it next Sunday? Stop stressing over tomorrow. It's today. If you've got what you need today, thank God. Philippians 4 says, be careful for nothing but everything in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God will keep your heart and your mind to Christ Jesus our Lord. In, in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, Paul says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Isaiah 26 and 3 says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Don't let worry take your mind. Stop thinking about those stuff. Father knows you've got to eat. He may not give you no shrimp. Come on, help me somebody. He may not give you no lobster. But he knows you got to eat. And I've discovered when you're hungry, peanut butter can taste like shrimp. As long as your belly is satisfied, it can be satisfied off a of steak or it can be satisfied off a of cereal. I just want to have something to satisfy the need. So you got that physical need that manifests because of a soul your deficit. You got to get the soul right. Stop stressing over it. And then you've got to get the spiritual need satisfied. What is a spiritual need? Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. What does he mean by that? He means hunt eagerly, passionately prioritize. Put the kingdom first. This is how it works. And we understand it on, on a surface level. Jesus wants us to understand it as a lifestyle on a deeper level. You do not go to work and say, I need my check. <laughs> and it's your first day at work. <laughs> you know you gotta do the work. Somebody say first. first. You gotta do the work first. Jesus is saying, if you seek the kingdom first, your needs will be met. We've got to stop going to the Lord, begging Him to meet the need, and we haven't sought the kingdom. I wish I had some witnesses here. Whatever God has called you to do, and, and, and God is so awesome, He can use whoever you are in the kingdom. 
Rick Warren told that story of how he had uh, 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 two members, husband and wife. The, the wife was in the choir. She was always bubbly and jovial, so he knew her well. But the husband would sit at the back, and then after church, he would just leave. So Rick Warren says he wanted to meet the husband and get to know the husband. He said, I wasn't trying to impress him. I just went to him and called him before he left and said, I'd love to take you out to eat tomorrow if you can do lunch. I just want to get to know you. He said, sure, where are we going? He said, right down the street, McDonald's. I ain't trying to impress you, we're going to McDonald's. When they got to McDonald's, they ate for lunch and he realized that the man had a, uh, uh, a company where he built houses. Uh -huh. And he said to the man, he said, I really want to get you more involved in church. He says, I, I want to be more involved, but I can't sing. I don't want to urge you. And I don't know what else to do. He said, are you serious? He said, we have some building projects that we're getting ready to put on Blueprint. Uh, right. I've been looking for an architect and someone in construction. Man said, oh, I got a huge construction company. I've built houses all over this city. He said, I've built other businesses and name businesses. He says, well, will you oversee all of our construction projects? He said, I'd be glad to. He said, the man oversaw the construction projects for decades. And because it was his church, never charged the church a penny. And then when he was on his dying bed, Rick Warren said, I went to him and thanked him for his service to the church. And he said, Pastor, no, 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 please don't thank me. He said, I've got to thank you. Because I always wanted to serve God, but thought I had nothing to offer. And you showed me all I had to do was be who I am and bring it to the kingdom, and you could use me just as I am. You got started that way in, in the air with devotion, just as I am without one plea. You don't have to become somebody else in order for God to use you. Just be who you are. to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt through the Red Sea on dry land. Yeah. He just had to be who God called him to be. Yeah. That's what Daniel did. Daniel, yeah, he, he was who he was, but that got him in trouble. Yeah. And I think a footnote belongs there. Being who you are can get you in trouble, yeah. but it'll get you out of trouble. It got him thrown in a den of lions, but he kept being who he was, and God took care of him so that while he didn't fight, the lions wouldn't bite. Because God took care of him in a den of lions. That's what happened with those three Hebrew boys. Yeah, they just were who they were even in a strange land. And it got them in trouble. They were thrown in the fiery furnace. But while they threw three in the fiery furnace, uh, the king said, I see four. And the fourth one looks like the Son of God. Because if you just be who God has called you to be for the ever-expanding work of the kingdom, He will take care of you. That's the same thing that happened to Jesus, our Savior, because He was who He was. It landed Him on the cross. But I'm so glad He didn't compromise who He was because it got Him in trouble. But even on the cross, He remained who He was. It got Him buried in Joseph's new tomb. But it also got Him up early that Sunday morning with all power in His hands. And that's all I want to say to you today. That if you just be who God has called you to be, Take care of you. Be not dismayed.
if there's one candidate for baptism, that are all Christian experience. The privilege of the church is extended. The doors of the church are open. Father, 
So now, Lord, as we make ready to leave this place and go to our various destinations, we do so with a kingdom consciousness. Guide us in our giving that we would give cheerfully to advance the cause of the kingdom. And then guide us in our going that we would find safe passage from this place to our various destinations. We pray that the love of you, our God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit, that it would be with us until we meet again. These and other blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Let us all sing.